Hello, I'm Keith Ford. And I'm Paul Levy, and today we've got another gun from the vault. Right here we have an FS2000. This is the civilian variant of the F2000 from FN. Uh, this is a pretty unique gun. I they say. are. <laughs> uh, I believe they're no longer in production. No, sir. Um, introduced in 2001, uh, was adopted by a few militaries. Um, Slovenia, the Belgians adopted it in limited quantity. Uh, really didn't take off. Uh, kind of took their P90 concept, their personal defense weapon, and they kind of expanded that into a 5.56. Uh, rifle platform uh, and that did go over well uh, in that chambering. Uh, we'll go through some of the similarities and then what really makes this uh, uh, unique. So this is an FS2000. I'll go over that first, what differs from that and the military version. The most noticeable version or variation is the optic. The F F2000, the military version, at least the original one, had an integral somewhat scope. Uh, still had a picatinny rail but it was covered up by this polymer cover and had a very small diameter. Uh, scope setup, and then had a slightly shorter barrel. Had a 16-inch barrel. Uh, this one has a little over a 17-inch barrel, uh, mainly for minimum length requirements uh, in the U.S. Uh, and then they removed the uh, bayonet lug. Mm -hmm. It's still got a Belgian-style yep. uh, flash hider up front, uh, but pretty much from that, outside of not being select fire, it's the same. Uh, and then as far as similarities to the P90, it has some unique uh, similarity, I should say similarities. Uh, one is the safety selector right here. It's this kind of rotary thing. Uh, that's one thing about the P90 and the, this uh, setup right here, the FS2000, I think they really nailed anyways, yeah. was they're both ambidextrous. Like, it's easy to work. They're fully ambidextrous. You, whether you're right or left-handed, uh, you can do everything uh, on these, these setups. So safe, fire, uh, and then up front you got this hand guard, which you could swap with a light, and they also had a 40 millimeter mm -hmm. grenade launcher you could swap up front. Now, for some really unique stuff on it, you've got uh, the chamber access right here, this door. Charger handles on the left-hand side, so simply retract. It'll go out to the side a little bit, retract. You can lock it back by bringing it up into that position. Uh, I did mention the P90 they borrowed a lot from, or it seems like the same engineers. They also, it seems, they borrowed a lot from the AUG. Gee, uh, sure did. Same charging handle placement. You can lock it back the same way. The trigger, or I should say the hammer pack, is almost identical <laughs> to an AUG. Uh, that's okay. It's, it's, you know, nice. If it nice works, to, it works. It works, it works. <laughs> uh, and then right here you have your port door access. So right in there, uh, you can get to the guts, or that's one of the downsides of the setup is if something goes wrong, you can't really get to a whole lot in there. And then you'll notice this polymer piece right there, which is you don't expect to see when you open up the, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the ejection port Looking cover right on a firearm. <laughs> uh, what that does is when, a, when it extracts a cartridge out of the chamber, once it's fired, that polymer piece takes it and shoves it up uh, right into this uh, channel or tube right above the chamber. And that's its ejection port. Uh, so the spent cartridges will stack up inside this ejection port and then up front, it's got this little door, and when it fills up, it'll open that, and then cartridges will just dump out the front. So, pretty unique right there. So like a Maxim gun, they would yeah, shoot out yeah. the front of it. Well, and really a similar concept as far as uh, the cartridges uh, loading, just like a 1917, mm -hmm. a Maxim, it's, it's taking them uh, from the bottom yep. and then vertically uh, ejecting them. So very similar uh, in how that functions. Uh, and then some other unique stuff, uh, probably why this gun wasn't so successful uh, is it had, uh, it didn't really, it, it clashed anyways with the tactics of the time and what people preferred in a rifle setup. It doesn't have, uh, one, people don't really like bulb ups in the <laughs> early 2000s, uh, but also it didn't have a drop free magazine, which is a lot of people see as a plus in a handgun or a rifle. It actually has a gasket and it only fits USGI aluminum style magazine. So when you put that magazine in, it's fully sealed from dirt and debris, which is uh, is nice, uh, but it's hard to sell it to the military, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, commanders when they've adopted the philosophy that you know we need a tactical Drop reload, it. that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, right here you have your magazine release, which again, uh, people are used to AR type rifles or a magazine release up front. You got to go back here, and it's just. It's just yeah. tough for people to pick and up. it's loud too. Yeah, I mean, there's that. And that's one thing I noticed when uh, charging it. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, there's a lot of, of stuff there. going on in there. Really unique uh, concept and setup. Um, 
but unfortunately never really took off and, mm -hmm. and now it seems it's discontinued and these are probably going to start commanding uh, quite the premium like they are. They're forebearers, the FAMAS here in yeah. the U.S. There's not a whole lot of them floating around. Yeah, I remember those were around $1,300. Yep, yep. Whenever you get them. So if you see one and you're into <laughs> bull pups, uh, maybe pick one up soon because uh, they're, they're, they're not making them again. So that's the FS2000 uh, from FN. Thanks to Rock Island Auction for letting us take a look at this. And we'll see you next time when we grab another gun from, from the vault. The